is fitting a short shifter to an MX-5 actually worth it? Do you need it? Well, Car Obsession is proudly supported by Carly and Draggy. Check out the video description to find out the latest discount codes. Hello guys and welcome back to Car Obsession. In this video I'm fitting a short shifter to Monique by Mark 1 Mazda MX-5 or Eunice Roadster if you want to be pedantic. Now I'd be honest with you, I never really saw the need of fitting a short shifter to an MX-5 because to be honest, the standard change is fantastic as it is. However, I was on Boffy Racing's website looking for something else and their short shifter just happened to jump into my basket and for the sake of £40 I thought, you know what, let me give it a go. In this video of course I'm fitting it as well as giving you my first impressions. To start off with, you'll need to pull off your knob. No, not that, no, that. get your mind out the gutter. No, I mean your gear knob. Simply unscrew it and hey presto. After that, you'll need to remove the center console by removing the screws pictured. Once you have removed the center console, you'll need to disconnect the switch for the windows and just pop the center console to one side until you have to refit it later. Once the center console has been removed, you'll have access to the upper shift boot, which is held on by four 10 mm bolts. Now, if you've had the MX-5 for quite some time, there is a good chance that your existing shift boot will be old and torn and knackered. Therefore, it's worth getting a rebuild kit in preparation for doing this job. I replaced my shift boot last year, so my one was fine. Therefore, I had to be careful when removing it as I didn't want to damage it. This was a bit of a faff, but thankfully someone in the workshop who was far more experienced than me was able to help me out. After you have removed the upper boot, you will now have access to the lower boot. This is also held on by 10mm bolts, only this time it's 3 instead of 4. After that, remove the OEM shifter, but bear in mind it will be covered in gear oil and you don't want to get the oil over your interior. If it's dry in there, you have some issues. It shouldn't be dry. With the shifter removed, you'll spot this, a nylon spacer, bush, washer, whatever you want to call it, this thing where the red arrow is pointing. No, not, not that kind of red arrow, that's, that's silly. There we go, that's more like it. I did find it a bit tricky to remove this washer or bush, whatever you want to call it, but with a little bit of encouragement, I was able to get it out with no real issues. Once more, be careful when removing it because that is likely to also be covered in gearbox oil and you don't want to get it on your interior. So you may want to have some rags or a bit of kitchen roll to hand just to wipe your hands and to wipe the part. You will be reusing that spacer, so don't throw it away. I can't emphasize that enough. If you do, you're in a world of pain you're now at a point where you can start taking the bits out of the kit and start fitting them to the vehicle, the exciting stuff. First off, you have this, I'm gonna call it a spacer, which you insert like so, simply drop it in and you're now ready for the next part. The next part is this little metal washer, which as you may be able to see, has got three tabs on it. That is designed for a reason, because that coincides with the nylon spacer or the bush or washer that you removed earlier. Place that on top, and then this is where you need to reuse that original nylon part you removed earlier, only this time you're mounting it in a slightly different way. Hopefully the clips show you what I mean. After that, you need to fit what I'm going to call this top piece. Of course, it needs to line up with the bolt holes as well as the cutout grooves as well. So you may need to spend a few moments just getting it all in sync. Now is the time to fit the new shifter. It does come with a nylon bush for the bottom of the shifter, but I was recommended by one of the lovely guys at Boffy Racing to not use that one and to use an OEM bush instead, which to be honest, isn't that expensive, so it is worthwhile doing. The shifter also has a cutout groove in it, which needs to line up with the necessary parts. Hopefully these clips give you an idea of how it should line up. After the shifter has been put in place, it's now time to fit what I'm going to call this metal plate. After you've dropped that on, you can now insert and tighten the bolts. The kit comes with new bolts because of course the OEM ones would be too short. 
Once that has been done, you can now refit your upper shift boot or fit a, a completely new one if that's what the car requires. Then it's a case of refitting the four 10 millimeter bolts you removed earlier. After that, refit the center console and of course refit the gear knob as well. When you first try out the new shifter, you may find it to be a bit notchy and a bit stiff. That will loosen up with driving as it needs time to bed in. One thing I will say is that the shifter comes in two parts that are screwed together. In my experience, I found that they didn't stick together too well even when they were super tight by hand, therefore I had to resort to Loctite. So you may want to do that before you do what I did and that is reassemble everything only to disassemble it again in order to apply the Loctite and then reassemble it all over again. Oh, a bit of a faff but by no means a hardship. And there we go, hey presto, the job is done. Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. But how does it perform on the road? Let's find out. So you joined me a few days later, and as you can see, the weather is not very nice. And as you can probably hear, I'm rather ill. I've been very ill, in fact. Which is why there's been a large gap between the last part of the video and this part of the, of the video. But anyway, I'm on my way to somewhere that I can't disclose just yet. Um, I haven't driven many miles since fitting the short shifter, so I'm still able to give you my relatively fresh first impressions. Now, it's still in the bedding in process, therefore it's still a little bit stiff. You still need to manhandle it a bit. It hasn't quite got the, uh, the fluidity that I'd want just yet. When I first fitted it though, uh, when I first moved the car, I was like, oh blimey, that is short. I know it's a short shifter, but yeah, it feels remarkably, the, the change is just remarkably snappy. It makes the old change, which in my opinion was very good, feel sloppy and, it's, and it, as if there was a bowl of porridge in here. Yeah, the old change compared to this just felt a bit sloppy. There's a bit of play in it. And I wouldn't call it long, but yeah, this is definitely more direct. That's the word, that's the word I was looking for a few moments ago. It's very direct and it, it feels almost like driving a Caterham now, which would make sense because Caterhams do actually use MX-5 gearboxes. Fun fact for you. So yeah, now it feels more sports car than roadster. And it wasn't that difficult to fit. A little bit fiddly in places, and it would be helpful if it came with, the, came with instructions, but hey ho. And for the results that you get, would I say it's worth it? Yeah, definitely. Now, there are more expensive kits out there, which I'm sure may give you a better feel, a better finish. But I think I paid about 40 quid for this kit from Boffy Racing. And I would say, bear with me. The fifth. Put standing water. Yeah, I would say that was money well spent. So yes, to conclude, should you buy and pit the Boffy Racing Short Shifter Kit? That is a resounding yes. Is fitting a Short Shifter to an MX-5 actually worth it? Do you need it? Well, the result is more... Uh, noticeable than I would have predicted. Would I say you need a short shifter in an MX-5? No, but should you fit one? Yes. And on that note, <laughs> it is time for me to finish. I will pop the uh, link for the um, kit in the video description below. If you have enjoyed this video or found it useful, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. Until the next time guys, 
Be sure to keep up the car obsession.